All right, so first a quick recap on nuclear magnetic resonance, which is the underlying phenomenon that describes this device. So um, let's say we have Earth's magnetic field and we have our qubit happily chilling in it, uh, aligned with that direction. That could be you know, our protons, it could be electrons, whatever. In our case, it's the hydrogen protons in water. And we have our big coil antenna and what we do is we um, vary the voltage in here, which creates an alternating uh, electromagnetic field, which then kicks the qubit so that it rotates. Getting it to rotate the amount, right amount is a whole thing, um, and see my Rabi oscillations videos for that. So um, ideally, it'd like to point back up, but it has a spin, spin one half. And so it has to precess like a gyroscope. And so it begins to nutate, as you've heard before. Now, um, if we have enough of these, then their effect of uh, rotating around, because you know they're their own bar magnets, which means they have their own electromagnetic fields. And so um, that adds up. And if there's enough of them and our device is sensitive enough, we can pick that back up uh, using the same antenna that we used to kick it. And so from our point of view, if we have voltage on this axis and time on this axis, then what we see is we give it you know, a huge kick and then we see it precess. And that's what we're looking for. All right, so then how does an MRI machine work? Well, we know that for a certain magnetic field, we have a certain oscillation uh, precession speed. We call that the Larmor frequency, omega. So this omega is equal to Eg B over 2m. Um, B is the magnetic field, so a stronger magnetic field will create, a, you know, will cause like have a stronger pull, which means the particle will want to precess faster. Um, E is kind of the charge of the particle. Um, again, with the stronger particle, it has more link to that field, so it spins faster. Um, G is gyromagnetic ratio. No, sorry, it's the G factor. Um, this whole thing is the gyromagnetic ratio. And M is the mass of the particle, um, which makes sense. You know, if you have a bigger person trying to dance, they're going to dance slower than a smaller person. So how do we use what we know about our Larmor frequency to create an MRI machine? So what we can do is we can create magnetic coils that create a gradient. What I mean by a gradient is that on one side, the magnetic field is higher, or I guess giving a little bit of push. And on the other side, it's giving a, like taking away a little bit. And so what happens here is that the magnetic fields here add up and here's they subtract. And so the Larmor frequency is higher here and lower here. But if we're only sending in one specific frequency, what that really means is that guys over here are not going to resonate, guys over here are not going to resonate, and only this thin slice here is going to resonate. And so by controlling how much current we put through the gradient coils, we can control which slice of this we're talking to. And you by and so we can kind of map this out. So for example, let's say we have a pair in our chamber. Then when we um, provide just a little bit of let's map this out. When we provide just a little bit of current, um, let's do current in this direction, um, A for amps, and let's say a response from oops, response in this axis then providing just a little bit of current is going to only graph this slice. So it's going to be, you know, somewhere like here. Then we add a little bit more current and now we get a response from this slice and so on and so forth. And as we go along, we get a silhouette of the object we're trying to map. And the cool thing about this is that with enough gradient coils, you can do this in 3D, and then you can get a 3D picture of this. 
um, including the insides, right? Because um, for here, we all, it, the MRI system only cares about where the protons are. And so um, for humans, right, we have more water in some of our organs than, other, than water in other organs. And so those organs will light up even, you know, through our skin because of this mechanism. All right, so you may be able to recognize we have our gradient coils already in here and they're connected to a power supply. And obviously it's not on yet. Um, we're gonna try imaging this bottle of soy sauce. Um, in order to make sure that it stays kind of level, I'm gonna add this. Um, yes, parchment paper has hydrogens in it, so it will respond, but it's also really light. So there are, like, there are not any or very few compared to you know, this thing. Um, the other thing is that um, glass is silicon dioxide. Um, I believe both of those are not spin one half protons, so um, we shouldn't even see the glass. Technically, we're gonna be imaging the soy sauce inside the container. ready to gather some data. All right, it took a while, but we finally finished gathering all the data. And so this is what our data looks like. And if you take that one dimensional data and you revolve it around the axis, we get this shape, which is pretty close, I would say. All right, so what's next? Well, um, it'd probably be nicer to have thinner slices and to get thinner slices, we probably need a slightly higher magnetic field. Um, although that might be tricky because we're using their magnetic field, so we can't do anything there. Um, but what we can also do to get thinner slices is get better, finer control. So basically, um, right now, we are taking square waves and we're cutting off the corners using a low pass filter. And so if we can get smoother, rounder waves, then at a specific frequency, um, so we could also probably um, interject with a better clock in there too. Um, then we know that the frequency that we're sending in, the Larmor frequency, um, will be finer. And so that should give us a you know, thinner slice. Um, other than that, um, the other thing left to do is have a, a way to rotate this so that we can get um, the gradients going in other directions. And then also, um, right now, this is just a one directional gradient system. What we really want is a gradient system that we can put you know, in the other axes so that we can get a 3D uh, image instead of a 1D image. Stay crunchy. <laughs>